Get your Andy fix at SorgatronMedia.com slash Sorg. Get 25% off any digital download with the coupon code SUPPORTINDIE. Including the latest release, Steel City Prodigy, the best of Ryan Mitchell. Want to have your business or podcast featured on the show? Contact us at info at SorgatronMedia.com. Subject line, advertising. Hey guys, welcome back. It is the Indie Mayhem Show, episode 8, still rolling. Still loving independent wrestling, still living independent wrestling. Uh, and this is where we get to talk about that without all the thrills and the haters that are watching their John Cena's and their Batista's and wondering where CM Punk is. There's us talking about uh what we like to talk about with the indie wrestling uh of course uh again the intro uh by basic sickness thanks for that check them out at basicsickness.com and you can find out more about this show and other things that we do over at wrestlingmayhemshow.com uh you can find this show on itunes stitcher and youtube uh as well as spreaker now as well um you can also drop us a line to good times at wrestling uh hopefully subject sub, excuse me subject line indie uh so we can decipher you from the rest of the riffraff that emails the show uh you can drop us a line at 412-206-wms0 follow us on twitter at mayhem show or wrestling mayhem show on facebook google plus and of course the facebook group um and uh and, and you can join us live t- uh, every tuesday at 11 p.m eastern time at live dot sorgatron media dot com uh with me is my usual trusty co-host fellow in the independent wrestling world uh myself on the video side here in the pittsburgh area but down in san antonio texas there's a guy more talking about wrestling yeah on the audio side so we're a perfect mixture so we're we we go together like peanut butter and and ham I don't know why. I tried to find a con. I can't come up with jokes. What am I doing? Um, but yeah, <laughs> we're on a podcast talking about indie wrestling, and it's fun times. <laughs> awesome. Now I know this week you got you got a guest. Somebody has joined us before on the Wrestling Mayhem show who might be checking his hair right now. Uh, <laughs> why don't you introduce him? I know he's a good friend of yours. Yes, um, we had him on the Wrestling Mayhem show. I want to say about a year ago um, to talk about his film that he is producing, a little indie film entitled "Meet Me There." But now, uh, along with me, he is involved in the indie wrestling world as a part of Inspire Pro Wrestling, the ring announcer for Inspire Pro, uh, and he's got tons of stuff to talk about including definitely a lot about inspire pro ladies and gentlemen please welcome mr brandon strad brandon how are you uh hold on a second i need to check my hair <laughs> <laughs> uh, uh yeah. yeah uh thanks for having me i just finished my peanut butter and ham sandwich i'm really happy to be I, on the show you know uh, okay brandon knows me enough to, to where i'm <laughs> terrible enough with jokes and with puns and and stuff like that so note uh, and i've noted this before if i ever say a pun of any sorts on commentary brandon probably said it first and gave it to me so just putting that out there so is, um, is, is this similar to the um when everybody told you to quote your source when you were, were were quoting a lot of his stuff on the mayhem show well he wasn't quoting us it's not necessarily quoting a source if you just believe the opinion of a person but that's true that's true but you know, it's I. It, he he's my pun man. He 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 comes up with all my material. He's <laughs> amen. Get thee to a punner, man. Yes. Uh, yeah. No. Uh, I don't mind Eamon stealing my jokes. I feel like Eamon could like put on a hoodie and like a Christina Von Erie shirt and a Brown Rock Express hat and just be me on the show. Uh, he, I don't even need to be a, here. There is a secret. Eamon, can you do like a ridiculously deep voice? Can you do my voice? <laughs> oh yeah, you know me enough to where I can do that. Do it, brother. Um, I want to hear it. I want to hear it. Let's hear it. Well, I'll have to tell someone eventually my giraffe impression. Uh, but no. Uh, <laughs> what is happening to this show? <laughs> this is horrible. I'm sorry. Um, this, this is, is what you get when you have Brandon Stroud as a guest, guys. Yes. Uh, affectionately known as Big E, um, since he is the bigger version of uh, yours truly. Um, so, yeah, let's talk about wrestling. Let's talk about Inspire Pro, Brandon. Uh, and more specifically, now that you're involved in an indie wrestling company... How crazy is that, first off? Uh, yeah, ever since Batista's come back, everything's been crazy. <laughs> uh, that enormous Chinese baby with rave star tattoos in his armpits who dresses like a Grand Theft Auto character. Yeah, he's just been tearing it up on the indie scene. 
Uh, no, uh, being a part of a wrestling promotion is bonkers. Uh, it, it has caused me to lose my sugar on multiple occasions. Uh, just being involved at all is really prestigious uh, in my brain, and it's also like a dream come true. Uh, but I'm sort of... Uh, we don't we don't really have a DVD sales set up yet, and our YouTube channel is still sort of getting going as we adjust production and things. But I'm sort of like the visible voice of Inspire. I'm going to argue with Eamon about that. Like we're sort of on par. <laughs> no, like totally cool. I'm but, the one everybody okay. sees and complains to, and Eamon is the <laughs> one who gets to call the matches and have fun. Uh, so you know, if there's a problem, people come up to me and they're like, "Hey, what what happened?" Or if somebody wants to get into the promotion, they come up to me and they're like, "Hey, how do I?" How do I become a manager? Well, well, you know, okay. It's like I'm the guy who's just in front. So suddenly I'm just thrust into this like job of importance, and it's amazing. We have had five shows, and each one's been bigger and more filled to the walls than the previous. Uh, so, yeah, it's, it's, really, it's really important and <laughs> really sort of shocking that I get to be involved in it at all. Yeah, definitely. Because I sort of have that same feeling like coming in, working for a wrestling promotion for the first time. And I mentioned it a lot on this show, but it's it's freaking crazy experience. Um, I guess since we can start, we usually when we have a wrestler on this show, we talk about like their beginning experiences. Um, and you have you have more experience, I guess, in the wrestling world than I do that most people probably don't know about because you, you've been to wrestling school. You've done, you know, you've, you've taken your bumps for the boys. I have. I took my bumps for the boys. Uh, I'm, I'm the pro. You're not the pro. I'm the pro. Uh, this is an no, inside I, joke, I, but if I, you're in Texas, you're loving it right now. Um, I went to I went to wrestling school. I wasn't good at wrestling school. Uh, I'm not a pro wrestler. Uh, I went for the experience. I went to sort of. Uh, I write a lot about it. I guess people probably know that, but I write a lot about it. And I was always told by wrestlers that I didn't know what I was talking about until I did it. So I decided to try to learn how to do it. And it gave me a really good perspective on how the product works, uh, how shows get made, how matches get made. Uh, and being involved in Inspire is sort of a continuation of that. I've learned so much mm -hmm. about just how wrestling works just by being there, just by being around these guys who are killing themselves and they're artists and I get to, to work with them. I'm, I'm sort of the easel that holds the canvas <laughs> and then everyone paints on it. It's, it's pretty cool. Uh, but yeah, uh, I trained a long time ago. I got awful. Just the worst wrestler you've ever seen. <laughs> uh, there's going to be so many, there's going to be so much worse. We did mention the big Asian baby on raw. So, Oh yeah. I'm better than Batista probably right now. But, <laughs> <Big> Asian uh, baby. <laughs> I can I can do a shoulder block and shake a ring rope without gasping for air and collapsing and having to lie down for 20 minutes. Uh, but no, uh, I was terrible. Uh, didn't pursue it. I ended up moving. Uh, so thankfully they never put me in matches or anything. Uh, but yeah, it, it's, it's interesting. I've been involved in some form or another on the outskirts of the wrestling business forever. I mean, I've been writing about wrestling online since 1998. So that's ridiculous. 1998, the year Eamon was born, I was writing about wrestling. <laughs> I was like five. Like, let's give, let's give me a bit of credit. Um, but no, like, I can really attest to that sort of feeling of like, like, especially since I started working for Inspire, like, not even both the wrestling, but just the whole like coming together of a show and of a company in general. Like, it's, I don't think a lot of people realize how much goes into it. Like how much is actually put into the actual like getting the whole thing together. Like I think it's it, when you see that from that perspective, you're like, wow, it doesn't just take you know, you know, anyone to run a wrestling promotion. Like you know, and then put on a, 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 a not a decent product at least, or, or even what I think I think Inspire is doing is a really good product. Um, so yeah, yeah in a post uh, in a post syntax pro wrestling world, uh, we had to. <laughs> bring a high quality promotion to central texas so here we are <laughs> yeah definitely um hey, hey, well, if but, i can if i can interject uh uh, uh amen because it feels like it feels like uh, you guys seem really you know in similar situations as me whereas you know you're more in the production side 
you know, or, or, or at least the presentation side of things. And again, kind of right. that easel that keeps it together. Uh, like for me, like I, I often say, you know, I'm very vocal one way or another. It's about, about DVDs I produce, whether I like them or not, uh, as a wrestling fan. I work for IWC because I was a fan of it beforehand, right? And, mm-hmm. and I'm, I'm more than proud to be working with it. I love seeing how RWA has grown. I found my questions about it at the beginning, but, you know, it's, it's, it's turned into a pretty decent promotion um, that I'd love to see get out there. Do you guys find yourself as we just kind of work here and we're as much fans and observing and reacting and doing our part in it? Like, like you know, like, is that kind of how you guys approach it? Like, like I'm still the fan, but I just happen to be around the stuff. Uh, I'm going to be egotistical for a second and say, no, I don't. Okay. Uh, I, I feel like I'm a pretty important part of it at this point. Oh, yeah. Uh, Especially I, I know the ring announcer is basically <laughs> the least important person in the world, but yeah, yeah. Uh, I take a lot of pride in what I do. I certainly don't go to shows thinking like, hey, wrestler, I want to take photos with you because... I'm a nerd. Like I do that everywhere else, mm-hmm. but you know, when I'm in Aspire, that's my job, mm-hmm. and I take that very yeah. seriously. I, th- I think I'm, I'm contributing a little bit creatively, and uh, you know, I've been tasked to do a lot of sort of ridiculous things in my five <laughs> show wrestling career. But yeah, I mean, I'm not as important as basically everyone else on the show, but I think I contribute. Well, you have to pin like. Print like forty-two pictures of Katy Perry or something, Brandon. Is this what's going on? <laughs> I, I did lose a DVD copy of the Korean monster movie Ape, starring Judith Light, uh, because Gary J That's needed it in his writer, and I'm apparently the only person in the world that had a copy of that. Wow! And well, thanks, I contributed thanks, it to the writer so Gary J would compete on our show, and it's gone. So I guess that wasn't <laughs> the thing I was ever going to get back. He wasn't renting it from me; he's just sort of taking it, which is fine, I guess. I think it's like seven dollars on Amazon, but. Yeah, it was a deep personal loss. I'm, I'm <laughs> sacrificing for the business. I got you. These are the things I sacrifice. I got you. I definitely got you there. And, and and I think that you mentioned something very key, and something that I really have sort of realized is that the the idea of like treating this as your job, treating this mm-hmm. as it's almost, and sort of the. I think the fear I had like going into it was the fact of I was coming as a fan Mm -hmm. into this wrestling promotion. I wanted to be taken seriously. I wanted to sort of, you know, gain the respect of these people. And luckily I think for the most part I have, Um, but I think it's because you you have to treat that job with respect and and Mm -hmm. treat it as just as important. Would you, would you attest to that? You think? Yeah. uh, It's, (laughs) this is going to sound like I'm blowing smoke up my own ass, but technically I'm a performer. Like yeah, I'm out yeah. in front of the fans yeah, yeah. more than most of the wrestlers. Mm-hmm. Uh, and you know, I'm not doing 1% as much as they are, but I'm out there. Like I'm, I'm a cog in the machine. Like I can't just, I'm not necessarily like on the production side where I can just like show up to shows and be like, here's what I contributed. See you guys later. Or I'm going to hang out back in the back and watch these matches. Like I don't even get to watch the matches a lot of times because you know, I'm sort of, paying attention to my duties it's it's yeah. weird uh it, i'm i'm the hardest working ring announcer in pro wrestling i like to say uh i i don't have as many cool as, as your girlfriend as destiny would say you're putting does, yourself but... over what's that i said as your girlfriend destiny would say you're putting yourself over brandon oh absolutely i'm shooting on the internet <laughs> i'm shooting on all these dick suckers in the back <laughs> Uh, it, it's kind of tracking back it. a little bit. I just saw it from the chat room. Lake Hick TKO asks, uh, Brandon, can you even back uh, handspan? I'm sorry. Can you even back handspring elbow, bro? <laughs> uh, I could I could do a backwards roll into an elbow. Uh, I'm not sure I could do the full-on handspring. I can certainly do a cartwheel. I can do a garbage cartwheel. I don't know if anyone's ever seen me be athletic, but it's not pretty. Um, <laughs> on, could, on the opposite spectrum, I've done the jumping jack like once, so... <laughs> oh, yeah. Uh, I can shoot on Eamon. I can shoot on Eamon. Uh, yes. <laughs> no. no, I'm more um, of a but, ground and pound offense. I'm not really finesse phase. Uh, but I, and I think what, like you sort of mentioned like your multiple duties beyond just sort of like more than – is it more than announcing the wrestlers' names in a sense? I would consider you not just a ring announcer but also like a host in a sense. So you're hosting this show and you're sort of like guiding people along mm-hmm. through it. I, and would you would you agree with that? Because I I think the benefit of you being there is because you also have a, a history of like hosting experience. Um, so would you would you I attest do. to that? 
I am a I am a five time Air Sex Championships judge. Uh, <laughs> I have hosted two veggie hot dog eating contests at Fun 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 Fest. Uh, what else have I done? <laughs> Just weird weird stuff like that. That's a hell, uh, that's a hell of a season. Yeah, I'm at least Hulk Hogan. Hosting WrestleMania 30, I think I'm at least Hulk Hogan. I would say, <laughs> as as far as it goes to comparing myself to people in the business, I would say I'm probably on par with Hulk Hogan. Yes, uh, but no, uh, yeah, it's a hosting gig, I suppose. Uh, I tell people to tip the bartenders and to buy the shirts and welcome them to the shows and stuff. Uh, I certainly, I certainly take pride in that. Uh, I like being sort of the introduction that a lot of people have to the shows, being like, hey, guys, here's what's going on. Because uh, that's always really important to me. Uh, mm. I really like it when ring announcers uh, sort of guide you through what's happening without being overbearing. Like, I don't think I've ever said my name on one of the shows, but, you know, if you need to have a proper pronunciation for Takaaki Watanabe, I can do that. So. <laughs> you did, which you did very well, by the way. Even the even his uh, hometown, which was I, I was supremely impressed with. Yeah, thank you very much. Uh, like I said, like I said, I'm, I do my research. I know these guys. That's that's part mm-hmm. of the thing is that I've seen these guys wrestle. Like I've seen them perform across Texas and across the country. I mean, I've seen ACH wrestle in Texas. I've seen him wrestle in New York. I've seen him wrestle in Pennsylvania. Like I, I've seen these guys everywhere. You know, mm-hmm. so like I know who they are. I know where they're from. I know how much they weigh, even though I don't normally announce that. Uh, also, uh, <laughs> you're showing a clip of Andy Dalton making me say the phrase fucking pussy uh, <laughs> in front of a wrestling crowd that includes baby Jonah. So I don't appreciate that <laughs> dirty Andy Dalton. Well, well, it, when, when you communicate with dirty Andy Dalton, it's hard to. Uh, I, had, I, I did commentary with Andy Dalton once before, and, and it's a fun time. Um, I'll, He's I'll, the dirty I'll mind of wrestler, yeah. Dirty mind of wrestling. Um, well, it's sort of going off of like you, you mentioned in getting to announce like Takai Watanabe. Um, what's sort of the coolest thing that you've experienced since working for Inspire? Like I've I've shared like a bunch on this show, but I, I really want like what what do you well, or you don't have to pick one necessarily, but what would you think would be uh, your coolest moment since working for Inspire? Uh, I can give you a top three. How's that work? Let's do that. That sounds great. Okay, uh, there was a moment on the first show uh, where I'm very nervous before every show. I've got crippling stage fright, uh, which you may not be able to tell. Hopefully you can't tell that. But I have crippling stage fright. Terrible, terrible stage fright. Uh, So my stomach is in my throat as these shows are going on. And at the end of the first show, our very, very first show, uh, Davey Vegas in the ring with me. Chuck Taylor's in the ring with me. Uh, ACH's music is playing, and he's flipping into the ring. And he's doing his, you know, Iron Man entrance into the ring. Uh, and I just sort of realized, like, wow, this is real. Like, I'm here. Like, I'm a part of this. Like, I'm 0% the reason that anyone's here or the cool thing about what's happening right now. But I'm in the ring with these dudes that I respect and idolize and love, you know? Uh, that mm-hmm. was a big one. Um, giving the Great Depression a Christmas present uh, was another one. Uh, that guy's threatening. Uh, He's I don't very, totally know I, what his deal we, I, I was trying to get him to not like strangle you by your tie at ringside last show. Which yeah, he's a he's a sweet nineteen uh, thirties dust bowl monster. I mean, he's a sweet he's a sweet guy. Uh, I spent some time with him at Max's house, uh, Max Meehan's house between shows. Uh, he's a, he's a nice guy. I watched him sleep in a shed and play with a dog. That was fun. Uh, but yeah, giving him a Christmas gift uh, indirectly from Paige Turner was fun. I had to explain to him what a book was and what a Christmas present was. I don't know. Uh, <laughs> the big one, my big number one, uh, and there was a clip of it there just a second ago, uh, was when Chris Hero wrestled Ray Rowe. Uh, because I'm standing in the ring and Chris Hero gets announced and those streamers start getting thrown. Uh, and there's a really fantastic picture uh, via uh, Kelly Kyle uh, photography. Friend of the uh, uh, Indie Mayhem show, Kelly Kyle, from Indie Mayhem show 2. Yeah. Uh, right here, uh, they throw the streamers, and I look up and see a streamer flying over my head. And I, I, I don't linger there, but I sort of stopped and watched it fly over my head. And I was just like, wow. Like, I'm, I'm part of a wrestling show. Like, this is... 
this is amazing and it's not just a dream I had. It's continuing to mm-hmm. happen and, and it gets better and better and, and Chris Hero is in the ring with me and Ray Rose in the ring with me and there's streamers flying over. Like in nineteen ninety eight when I'm a kid watching Michinoku Pro tapes that I got via tape trading because I was born in the Stone Age. You know, watching people throw streamers, I'm like, wow, that's really cool that Japanese fans do that. Mm-hmm. And then, yeah. you know, 15 years later, 16, 17 years later, I'm in a ring where streamers have been thrown. You know, that's mm-hmm. that's crazy. I mean, like, who, who knew that I would ever do that? And that's when I, when I talk about being a fan and being a part of it, That I think that's more the experience I'm talking about. Like, for me as a videographer, you know, for a few years doing ringside, it was like, you know, having a show, a million dollar man's there doing the money spot, you know, and everything. I was like, this is an image that's in my head from when I was a kid. And here I yeah. am filming the same thing, you know, like, you know, how many years later? And that little kid in me is like screaming to get out, right? But, but you know, you know, you're professional, whatever. Uh, but, like, those are the kind of moments that kind of make, like, wow, again, I'm part of this, you know, people are going to see this the people that buy this dvd are going to see this you know or, or you in the ring or, or aiming on the mic or something um and, and that's a really cool experience for us i think yeah, yeah. I, I i feel I, like I think, I, have... uh, I think the most important thing to remember from that is mm-hmm. that that experience can evolve you yeah. know it's yeah. like you start off as a fan and like the first show like i really do feel like i was just a fan like i i almost wasn't even the ring announcer like i i got offered the position and uh like a week before the show i was like yeah i don't think i can do this like can you guys just find somebody else because this is too stressful for me uh crippling stage right uh and justin bissonette was kind enough to be like come on man just try it out one one time and if, if you hate it we'll find somebody else uh, and I did it, and I, I was very much a fan, just being like, hey, this is an experience, and I did it, and that's the end, I'm a fan. Uh, but by the fifth show, uh, it's it's a professional experience. It's like, it's it's changed into this, it's evolved. It's like a, it was a, it was a Clefairy, and now it's a Clefable, you know? And it's still a Clefairy, and it's not like it's like a, not a Gyarados or anything, but it's still pretty amazing. And thank you for suffering through my Pokemon references. I apologize. That's okay. You should have heard some of the shows earlier tonight. <laughs> <laughs> I, and I can, I can like definitely go with like what Brandon said. Especially, I had that feeling during that match, that match that we just mentioned. Like, I followed Indies for like a good while, but like living in Corpus Christi, like just moving to San Antonio, like I never experienced anything. Like, I went to a Chikara show with Sorg in Cleveland once, and like that's like it, pretty much. Um, so that show was one, like the first time I ever got to see Chris Hero wrestle live. And to think, wow, I didn't just get to see that. I got to call his match with ACH, you know, just screaming our heads off. Like, that's crazy to me. Like, that's, you know, it's, it's that whole, like, retrospective of, like, looking back five years and being like, what, in, in what world would that have happened? Like, it's, it's so weird to me. Um, but I, I can definitely agree with Brandon on that. Um, I guess you, and also what we mentioned sort of like um, the learning process, I guess you could say learning like everything, not everything, I guess in a sense, but more than what you knew before, what goes into wrestling. What do you think um, in turn, what do you think has been sort of the hardest thing? Uh, and you mentioned your uh, like stage, right? And all that stuff. And then I can, uh, you know, admit to that for myself as well. But like, what, what, what do you find, have you found most difficult so far? Uh, buying a nice suit. <laughs> I don't know. Uh, yeah, I, I try to look the part. Uh, no, uh, the hardest nice. part for me. Oh God, uh, the hardest part for me, just trying not to be a negative part of the show, like not being lazy, like taking my job very seriously, like staying on top of things, like micromanaging facts and changing cards and people who might not be at the show and people who showed up late and, and matches being switched around and stuff. I've got a little stack of index cards uh, with my terrible handwriting, just scribbled names and scratches and hometowns and scratches. And just, I think Eamon has bailed me out on so many wrestler hometowns at this point. <laughs> like I was an encyclopedia of wrestler hometowns, Oakville, Missouri. Uh, but yeah, I just just keeping that information in my head and not just just farting it out, you know, like like being a pro and being like, yeah, I'm a good part of this show. I'm not garbage, uh, and also not vomiting everywhere. Uh, not vomiting is a really yes. important part of the show. Um, it's always really good. <laughs> I'm still trying to find a place where I can buy an Aquaman costume though. <laughs> 
<laughs> Shout out to Aquaman, by the way. No disrespect. Shout out we'll, to we'll have to go into that, but um, yeah, yeah. Um, yeah, so I guess we also should. I, I want you on to obviously. I mean, we're promoting Inspire Pro, but I want you to promote your stuff, uh, especially the mm. stuff. Um, uh, w- since we had you on last, and w- when we got to talk about like in the production stages of Meet Me There, uh, me- and a lot has happened with the movie uh, since then. Yes, quite a bit. Uh, I'm not totally sure how much I can announce, uh, but we have gotten into two film festivals already, which is nice. Awesome. Uh, we haven't uh, we haven't made that public, I don't think, so I don't think I can share too much about that. Uh, our world premiere, our official world premiere, happens on April 4th uh, at 11.59 p.m. Uh, in New Orleans on WrestleMania weekend. Uh, that's going to be amazing. Uh, we are almost done. We've got our original score happening now, which... I, I did something that required an original score. What the hell? Um, <laughs> and, you know, we, we, we've done ADR with everybody. We've gotten all the dialogue and audio sort of fixed and worked out. We're still, you know, tinkering with it. It'll change a lot before it ends up on a Blu-ray somewhere. But, uh, yeah, the fact that festivals are interested in it at all, uh, much less festivals around the world. Like, we've got interest from Europe. We've got an interest from all across the country. Like it's, it's the benefits of having uh, a recent WWE tag team champion in your movie, I guess. Mm-hmm. Uh, and also, uh, Evangelistico. <laughs> uh, so, yeah. There's, know, there's a lot of independent know, wrestlers. In the movie. I don't know if really I that mentioned cool. that, but yeah, we've got, uh, Addie stars in the movie. Uh, Leva Bates is in the movie. Uh, Davey Vega and Evangelistico are in the movie. Uh, Mr. Thomas Shire is in the movie. Uh, Angelus Lane's in the movie. Uh, lot, Jack Jameson is in the movie, as you can see from this clip that we're showing right here. Uh, you know, a lot of really cool people are, are in this thing, and it's it's pretty exceptional. I'm honored to have all these people involved. Uh, I started off, I wanted to write the movie, and I was like, you know what? I'm a wrestling asshole. I make everything I do about wrestling. I need to just chill with the wrestling, make an adult feature film, and not have it be about wrestling. Uh, and then I was like, okay, I'm going to cast Gold Dust. And then I was like, <laughs> okay, let's cast all these indie wrestlers. And then it's like, okay, let's film a scene at a wrestling show. And then it's like, okay, Lisa Friedrich's wearing a Daniel Bryan shirt and an Ultraman is black shirt. Uh, <laughs> so I can't get away from it. I just absolutely can't. It's in my blood. It is. It's everything about me. I, I can't get away from this wonderful, wonderful sport that is for stupid people and babies. <laughs> Absolutely. Absolutely. Uh, but yeah, I believe you can go to meetmethermovie.com to uh, yeah, go can. check that out. And you can also listen to uh, Indie Mayhem Show episode six, I believe. Yes. Uh, where we talked to Lex Librand, uh, also about the movie and about Inspire and his role in Inspire Pro as well. So uh, here you go, Eamon. Stuff- uh, I'll do the six, and you can make it two. <laughs> <laughs> And we can, we, yeah. Sorry, that's the most insider joke. We, but I'm gonna. We reforming it as an age. Joke about Eamon, Eamon Payton's Mark photo with Asian <laughs> mates. Yes, if you, I, I will have to find that somewhere because it's amazing. Wait, wait, is this is, is this the point we're talking about? No, this isn't the point. But if you notice, um, it's with. Uh, let's talk about aces and eights, whatever. Uh, <laughs> it's with Devon, Mike Knox, and Luke Gallows. Okay, and. I believe Mike, or I believe Mike Knox is like to the right of me, and everyone else is to the left, and they're doing their hand symbols. But uh, both of uh, Devon and Luke Gallows are holding up eights, mm. so they have three fingers and then like four. Or... <laughs> Do you know math? Three finger, three fingers and five. Excuse me. Um, and I'm holding up a two, or I believe I'm holding up a six for some reason. <laughs> and then Mike Knox is randomly holding up a two, <laughs> which makes an eight. <laughs> By the way, let's let's get these names because of, because of Illuminati. You weren't with Devon, Luke Gallows, and Mike Knox. You were with Brother Devon. <laughs> you were with Big LG, aka Doc, and you were with Nux. Nux, oh Nux! I'm completely looking for this picture now. <laughs> I'm with oh, a yeah. I was with a New Japan Pro Wrestling Tag Team Champion. And yeah, another yeah, dude who most likely could be another New Japan Pro Wrestling Tag Team Champion in like a year. Uh, but yeah, uh, Aces and Eights. Take Mark, uh, if you're at an indie show, take Mark photos with people. It's the funnest. 
Um, oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Uh, I guess uh, since we can also, we'll also plug the fact that you got a, a website where you do all your wrestling blogging that's sort of pretty famous, I'd say. <laughs> uh, yes, it's uh, it's www.zanga.com. <laughs> <laughs> No, uh, I am the editor-in-chief still, magically somehow, uh, at uprocks.com slash sports, a.k.a. widleather.com. Uh, either of them will direct you there. There's a picture of a horrible orange goblin. Uh, you can read about his appearance on Monday Night Raw. That awful bastard. Uh, he's He actually sort of looked like Sammy Guevara compared to Batista, though, so God bless him. Uh, yeah, yeah. yeah, with leather, we update not just about wrestling. Uh, I'm just to clarify, not a wrestling blogger, not a wrestling blogger. I am simply a comedy sports blogger who enjoys and knows way too much about wrestling, so I write about it. Uh, but yeah, uh, I, I use that excuse just so people can't put me in the IWC, which <laughs> which we will of, talk about later. Funny enough, <laughs> sort of makes me want to die. I'm so sorry. Uh, but, yeah, the hits and misses are raw by the IWC. Uh, no, uh, yeah, we wrote about sports a lot. Uh, we wrote about MMA today. We wrote about baseball. We wrote about uh, soccer. We wrote about the World Cup. We wrote about a lot of stuff. So if you like wrestling and you like some of my shitty jokes, uh, go to withleather.com. You'll read a lot of them. We have some comments from the chat. I wanted to get out here. Uh, Kelly Kyle uh, wants to know, uh, oh. did you say that uh, Kelly Kyle is in the movie? <laughs> I didn't. Uh, but I, Kelly I, I, Kyle, I, I, I uh, famous for breaking his Kelly leg Kyle's in a battle royal, uh, is in the movie in three roles. And by <laughs> announcing those three roles, I would be spoiling a lot of the movie. But uh, I, 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 will, I, I it, want to mention that I had the privilege of actually seeing the footage from one of those roles. And I got to say, it's a star-making performance. It's it magic. really is. Uh, the one that I can announce is that he plays a rural hillbilly who loiters outside of a gas station. So that's pretty fun. Hmm. There you go. Also, Kelly Kyle was a, an amazing part of our film shoot. Just to just to put Kelly Kyle over for a second, that guy was utilitarian. <laughs> Not only did he play free roles, uh, two of those roles were just off the cuff. Like we cast him in one role. Uh, alongside Justin Bissonnette of Inspire Pro Wrestling fame as well. Uh, tried to get Eamon Payton in the movie, but he couldn't find time in his busy well, schedule. Because I live four hours away, and it made me sad. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> but uh, <laughs> Kelly Kyle, uh, on-set photographer, he was there more than some of our producers. He's he's an amazing dude. And without him, that movie wouldn't have ran as smoothly as it did. So thank you, Kelly Kyle. You are the man. Uh, like Hick TKO, K excuse me, like kick TKO, it's late, uh, asks, are you a better <laughs> announcer than Eva Marie? <laughs> no, no, I'm not. Uh, I'm also nowhere near as comely as Eva Marie. <laughs> Eva Marie, however you say her name. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> Dark Maria is what I like to call her. Uh, <laughs> so, oh, God. <laughs> she's like she's like a palette swapped Maria. Like if, if Maria's player one, then even Maria's player two. Like her, her skin gets a little darker and her hair changes color. That's that's what happens. Uh, but no, uh, I'm at the I'm at the bottom of ring announcers. I don't give myself a hell of a lot of credit. I'm the hardest working ring announcer, uh, but I'm not the best. I'm working on it. I think I think give me a few think, years, think, maybe I'll be you, in contention. I think once. You once you pull a Christy Hemi and say following in a match, then you'll be up there. The following contest is scheduled for one ball. I'm going to now I'm being now murdered I'm ask, by a crazy killer. Now I'm going to ask for the next Inspire Pro show just for randomly one time to Lex to do like a slow pan up your legs. <laughs> for yes. no reason. Okay, okay. This is going to sound bad, but I want Christy Hemi to get murdered by Sam Shaw just so they can have... Just so they can have JB take back over as the ring announcer and do a slow pan up his slacks. It's going to be the greatest <laughs> thing in the world. <laughs> oh, jeez. Oh, this is good. Bobby says, uh, uh, Bobby F. J-Town says, uh, Eva Marie is the Rumble Rose's heel version of Maria. She yes. absolutely is. <laughs> Bingo. Uh, she's also the Def Jam Vendetta version. <laughs> jeez. Where the hell is my new Def Jam Vendetta game? Why does that not exist? 
<laughs> you have to. I'll have to ask. But that's all Sorg's territory in the video game podcast. So, so okay, that, that's well, your proposed question. Next next the case, really, so I'm the guy to ask about Def Jam. But <laughs> yes, Sorg. <laughs> this is where we're going with this. <laughs> make, make that what? the challenge for next week. Def Jam Vendetta. Let's we don't do even it. do I'm that gonna... anymore. You don't even listen to that show. <laughs> I think uh, it was a thing that's adapted into this podcast. Whatever. <laughs> sure. Um, but yeah. Uh, so yeah, you mentioned uh, with leather.com. Go support uh, Brandon Stroud in all of his offerings. Uh, Brandon, if you want to join us uh, as we uh, talk about the discussions uh, that we have in the indie wrestling world about some of the stuff that's been happening this past weekend. Uh, you're more than welcome to. Uh, and let's let's jump into Sorg uh, talking Ooh. about the IWC. No, not that IWC. <laughs> uh, the other one. Such an unfortunate name. Damn it. This is this is the one with 411mania.com slash wrestling in it, right? No. No, <laughs> no, no, no. This uh, is sescoops.com, right? Like, this is all IWC. <laughs> It's really, it's really funny that I know these websites. Uh, I keep a, a list of everyone who's done a really shitty ripoff of the best and worst of Raw. Uh, I keep them all on like a little list, and they're my blood enemies. Uh, every <laughs> night before I go to bed, I'm like, SC Scoops, IGN, 411, uh, in, a, in an Arya Stark-esque attempt to, to murder them all. So, no, I, shout out to all my boys in the copy and paste game. I love you guys. <laughs> <laughs> no, this is the International Wrestling Cartel. I still don't understand why they're a cartel, and I've been wa- watching them since 2007. Um, <laughs> Amazing. <laughs> but no, but still, uh, they had a is, show. This- is there a heavy uh, drug ban in the <laughs> International <laughs> Wrestling Cartel? I... I Pretty sure not. Um, but no, they had their first show of the year. Uh, they had to do a little bit of reschedule and jump around the um, uh, Royal Rumble and Extreme Rising show that never happened uh, in, the, in the past couple months. Uh, but uh, it was uh, kind of a BS show for them. You know, they kind of, you know, they have their Super Indie tournaments and their, their Cage Furies and their Winner Takes All. But this is kind of a uh, in-betweener one. Uh one of those where we brought in some names, uh, for instance, uh, as they still have the poster up on the front page, uh, we actually had Al Snow and Dal- I'm sorry, uh, Luke Gallows. Uh, funny, we were just big talking LG. about big LG, big LG, uh, big yeah, big LG Doc. Uh, this is one of those like it kind of threw me because it feels they did the battle royal and the winner meets the champion thing. So it felt like that's something they usually do when they go out to like out of the city to like Clearfield, West Virginia, something like that. So it felt mm-hmm. like a very eh, show, you know, but, but it was fun for what it was. Um, some of the highlights, uh, uh, facade for RJ city. I know was, was uh, pretty good. Um, uh, and the rest blank on me. Um, a new guy. <laughs> I don't know if you've heard of this guy. Asylum. Apparently he's from Canada. The story is I've heard of asylum, but I've never, I, I know he's a, Big burly guy. Yeah, we talked about. Him. I think we talked about him before. He 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 was um, a, a doctor or something on on. Raw. Oh yeah, he was a uh, Paul Heyman's doctor on Raw. Paul Heyman's doctor. Yeah, yeah. So um, I I'm really liking him. He uh, took on. I'll see if I can snack the name snag the name for that guy. Uh, and this is the stuff. It was a kind of a hectic night. So unfortunately, not a lot of it stuck in my head. Uh, other than the technical problems I was having during during the production, <laughs> you <laughs> had things to do. So. I had things to do and white balances that weren't working with a. Well, I had a new guy, uh, and who <laughs> I had a new guy that has never really even watched wrestling before, but he's good with a camera. So I put him on hard cam, and I had to kind of deal with that, you know. So I mean, but he did a good job. I think all things considered, and really got the hang of it uh pretty quick uh but the white balance was an issue unfortunately so now i have to fix that and re-edit the entire battle royal from the beginning of the show uh not a big deal uh but one thing that stuck out with me blake morris was actually the other guy I, again i don't know if this is a guy that you've heard of um I, I've, not, I've not heard of blake morris Tell here, me more. here's what he looks like um i described him when anybody <laughs> asks as a uh uh less annoying looking lex luger kind of guy um <laughs> But he he comes off as uh, he. What? <laughs> sorry, sorry. Uh, two things, really quickly. Not to not to interrupt the match report. Number one, uh, Lex Luger looks like baby Michelle Tanner. <laughs> You're never going to be able to shake that. In his face, he looks like the baby version of Michelle Tanner. Well, he also kind of looks like a frog. 
Uh, I'm done with secondly, that show now. Secondly, <laughs> yeah. Asylum. Two jokes about Asylum. Number one, he needs to be the direct-to-DVD ripoff of a much more popular wrestler. <laughs> <laughs> Number two, in a few years, he needs to change his name to Impact Zone. <laughs> yes. Okay. Okay. Um, but anyways, Blake was doing uh, an interesting, um, I want to say, evangelical kind of gimmick. Uh, and that that was a little weird and, and, and it kind of stuck out for me there. Um, but a fun show. And again, I mentioned this on the Mayhem show. I didn't know they had 25 wrestlers they could drag out for a battle royal in this group. <laughs> yeah, it's, it's always weird to be like, hey, that's a lot of wrestlers that we have. Yeah, yeah. And, and again, it was just like, and we were having so many problems. I'm dealing with it. And, and, and then I looked up. I'm like, when did all those people get in the ring? You know, it, it was huge. I got a picture. I'm going to pull up a picture from Instagram or something. Uh, but uh, it was a fun show. Uh, Al Snow was fun. He was doing the whole head thing. He did a whole uh, fight and, you know, with his head and people elbowed it and blew himself up doing the people elbow run. And and that was interesting. Uh, uh, Luke Gall is actually in the main event with uh, Dalton Castle. Uh, very impressive. Uh, Dalton Castle, uh, he does a, a deadlift fisherman suplex uh a, a lot of times and he did that with luke gallows was really impressive uh really fun show uh um you know it's no super indie or anything but it, it was a uh it came off pretty well um i also have with me since we had to send the b team uh down to uh, renegade wrestling alliance right down the road that was also having a show that night this is apparently going to happen a good bit this year uh <laughs> i actually have on the line uh our good buddy wheels What's up there, Sorg? Oh, I saw Eamon. Don't, don't mind Eamon's title over your face. Sorry about that. Uh, yeah, it's all right. I'll forgive him this time. Now, now he, he's kind of in the same vein. He's somebody that, that works uh, with RWA uh, as a part of it now for, for several years. Well, hell, you, you guys yes. just celebrated your fifth anniversary show last month. Exactly. So, yeah. Uh, um, and, it's and, been a lot of fun. Mm-hmm. And, and, and uh, you do the sound, actually, for them. Yes, I do the sound for them and quite a few organizations around the area and soon to be up in Erie. So <laughs> um, I'm getting around. Yes. <laughs> um, Quick question. If your name is Wheels, were you in the Burger King Kids Club? <laughs> God. That's an amazing no. reference. Uh, no, no. Sorg and Eamon know why they call me Wheels, and it's awesome he, he, in uh, both ways. Wheels is in a wheelchair and, and has often been at shows in, in motor scooters. And, uh, oh, nice. So, so yeah, that, though it's a very accurate name. So. <laughs> yes, yes. Uh, it used to be Hot Wheels, but then the Mayhem Show crew just cut off the hot part and just called me Wheels. Yeah, we, we, don't want to offend, we didn't want to offend anyone. Also, we didn't want copyright. <laughs> that, too. Uh, can you cut off? Can you cut off the wheels and just call him hot? <laughs> hey, oh, wow, oh, oh okay. Hey, hey, hot. What's happening? This is the indie mayhem show. So there we go. <laughs> Hello, yeah. ladies. But yeah, our uh, RWA this past weekend. So wheels, you were there. Uh, what yes. All, what all went down? Oh my. Um, as Sword said, we had the B team, as I call it, still the A team, because I mean. We did just fine together, and the show was amazing. All I know is I was working on my laptop, getting the sound all set up, watching the crowd come in. I'm like, okay, this is nice. I look down for, I swear to God, maybe a few seconds. I look up again, and Dr. Feelbad, the owner of the company, runs over to me and goes, we ran out of seats. I'm like, what? He's like, there's people that have to stand. We don't have any more room in here. I went. That's, all, that's always a very good sign. That wow. is the, it was a beautiful thing. I almost started crying. I'm like, can't cry. Got to do the show. That's awesome. <laughs> that, I mean, I was getting texts during the show. Uh, well, yeah, while producing the other show. And he said, like, it was literally standing room only. Um you know, now, granted, it's not a huge, huge gymnasium, but that's still right. a lot of people in there. Yeah, I mean, it, it was it was a shock. I mean, Sorg knows, and we mentioned it last week and a few weeks prior to that, of the upcoming show in April is a salute to the shoot, troops show. Mm -hmm. And we're like, was this what did it? Or is it 
just even more promoting that we've done. But whatever it was, it was an amazing show. That crowd was hot all night. My match of the night, I have to say, was Chris Taylor versus Ryan Mitchell. Mm -hmm. I mean, and they put on a great show. Generation Dead did a damn good job of their match. Mm -hmm. They have a new member in Lucio DeVere. Uh, and next month for March 36, we're going to have Jay Ice versus Joseph Allen Blackwall in a chairs match. Mm. And I mean, like, this is great. It's building and building. And that crowd, we had people already ordering tickets before the end of the show. That's nice. Awesome. Ordering tickets for March and April. And that's also was announced that this coming Monday, the sales for the Salute to the Troop show are on sale to the public on off of our website or calling our phone number. Mm -hmm. So it, it was a great show. I mean, the confetti was there. Uh, <laughs> I was just saying it earlier on the Mayhem show uh, that Lodi, most creative guy in the world with his signs from his WCW days, there's confetti during two or three matches. Lodi gets in, uses his big stack of uh, signs, and waves all the confetti out of the ring so he can have the match. <laughs> and, and we all just looked at each other and went, why didn't we think of that? It was very, very utilitarian of him. Yeah, it, yeah. it was, and he had a great match with uh, – William the Hammer Roberts, which they'll have a rematch next month due to some interference in this past month's show. So it was an amazing show. I enjoyed it. And Good. it was a great three days of wrestling for me. I mean, considering our show, Elimination Chamber and hmm. Raw. So I think I'm wrestled out for a few days. <laughs> <laughs> awesome awesome hey, you mentioned that one the salute to shoots hey, and that's really interesting what you guys are doing down there you're going to california cal U university and actually in a convocation sir which is like a six thousand seat arena uh and and, yes. and you guys are actually joining up locally with a uh salute the troops uh situation down there um so i mean it's not just uh, from my understanding it's not just gonna be you guys right like you guys are part of a bigger show it's uh it, or, it's we're going to have six matches, and there's going to be a possible singing of the national anthem. Mm -hmm. uh, there's definitely going to be an induction of new servicemen and women nice. inside of our ring. Nice. So, nice. And it, it's, it's one of our biggest shows ever, and I'm really proud to be part of it. And I, of course, live in California, Pennsylvania, so it's going to be a nice little easy trip for me to <laughs> – just drive my scooter down there and <laughs> be able to have a good time with Sorgatron Media, the Cal U students, the men and women at Serve Force. It's going to be something nice to pay back to them what they do for us each. And, and, you, got, and you guys have several people. Uh, you know, Ryan Mitchell that you mentioned, uh, former, I believe, Navy, if I'm not mistaken. Yes. Um, the referee, Bo, Bo is uh, you know, former Army, it looks like. Um, so it's really cool that you guys are, are kind of connected, kind of interesting way to, uh, you know, put the, the two worlds together there. Yeah. I mean, yeah, WWE has done it, but nobody, I think from what I've read or looked around, nobody in the, in the indie world has thought of something like that. And it feels great that we get to be the first. Yeah. That's certainly not in the area or anything that or anything on the scope. Uh, yeah. It seems you guys are doing so. That's really awesome. So if you want to check them out, they're over at rwalive.com and of course DVDs, all that kind of stuff. YouTube, if you want to look about a little bit more. There's a few flashback matches with guys like Jason Gorey, G Raver, guys that have been around. Uh, so go check those out. Um, Kevin McGrath, who I think I had a developmental deal at some point there. Um, so you can see what those guys are about. It's very, uh, I always say they're not like the indie riffic uh, kind of thing like like uh, IWC does. They're very um, you know, uh, I want to say old school, but you're definitely like the small, <laughs> I want to say the small uh, out of the city crowd will enjoy this a bit more. Uh, so mm -hmm. it's, a, it's, it's a lot of fun. I, I love that. And the crowd is just as entertaining always as uh, the show is there. Uh, so thanks, Wills for, thanks, Wills, for joining us. Uh, uh, hey, Amen. Amen. Uh, we have a challenge this week, right? Well, but before we do the oh, challenge. Oh, sorry. 
Wrong order. There was one more news point that I will not not talk about because it is <laughs> the most crazy thing that I would say happening this weekend besides a network launching. Um, I don't know so, what you're talking about. Whatever that was. Um, so uh, Ring of Honor, like we mentioned, had HonorCon this past weekend, mm-hmm. uh, and they did their whole thing celebrating their 12-year anniversary. But the big news beyond anything that's happened was the big announcement that they were teasing that they made at HonorCon was uh, two events that they are holding, uh, I believe, around May, uh, that they are entitling Global Wars, which will be Ring of Honor New Japan Pro Wrestling uh, co-promoted shows, uh, which will feature uh, New Japan Pro Wrestling stars like the IWGP heavyweight champion, Mr. Rainmaker himself, Kazuchiko Okada, uh, Hiroshi Tanahashi, uh, Shinsuke Nakamura, uh, Jado, Gato, Jushin Liger, like... Um, yeah, I may need to buy a plane ticket to Toronto. Holy crap. Um, and get a passport. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> it's got to be somewhere uh, around here. I will more than likely be at the Toronto show. Uh, as I'm repping my, my Canada hoodie, uh, thanks to my Canadian best friend, Daniel Matheson. Uh, uh, thankfully, my best friend lives like 10 minutes away from where the show's happening. So Yeah, you lucky bastard. <laughs> Uh, also, um, the Blue Jays play that day, so hey. Uh, but no, um, I wasn't totally sold on it until they announced Knack. Uh, I'm not going to miss the King of Swag. Uh, he <laughs> apparently is a huge Texas Rangers fan, uh, and has like a personalized Texas Rangers jersey, so I assume he's in <laughs> Texas a lot. He just doesn't wrestle here, so uh, yeah, I'm, I'm going to try my best to be at that. Awesome. Absolutely. I, I'm ungodly pumped for that, because holy shit. Um, that should be absolutely also, amazing. Also, you didn't mention the fact that we were at an independent wrestling show this weekend. We were. We went to River City Wrestling in San Antonio at Sideliners Grill. Well, uh, and me, River City's got a lot of really talented guys. We got to see the Submission Squad. Uh, we yes. got to see Masada. Uh, we got to see my boy Honky Kong. Uh, <laughs> have, Honky have, you, have you guys ever talked about Honky Kong in the show? I, I don't think on the indie show, but we have we, talked about it previously. We have certainly talked show. about him on the main I show. I had to have told these guys about Honky Kong. Yes. Uh, okay, uh, to anyone listening, if you've never seen Honky Kong, he is a Caucasian man who is also Donkey Kong. Uh, <laughs> and it's and he's also Kamala, which is weird. Uh, but yeah, he's on the show. Uh, we also got to see uh, Ring Announcer dressed as Aquaman. Shout out to Aquaman. Uh, and we got to see a referee's boob fall out because she was yes, wearing indeed. a sexy referee bikini. Oh, wow. So, big big fun times at the Sideliners Grill. That was a good show. Yeah, it's just just note to anyone, just a little uh-huh. word of advice. Uh, if you're going to have a sexy lady in a, in a string bikini, don't, uh, at least let not let a referee during the fast-paced submission squad match. That was a weird thing to talk about when I was at finally showing Honky Kong. Yeah. <laughs> Well, there you go. <laughs> a little slow on my transition. I'm sorry about that. <laughs> no, that's awesome. fine. Uh, we also got to see someone pay $400 to go on a date with Sean Hernandez. Super Max. Yep. Thanks. 400 bucks. $400. And she outbid a six-year-old, Man. which was the best part. <laughs> <laughs> Man. Oh, how I wish I was sometimes... How what's, how weird of a world it is where I kind of wish I was Sean Hernandez, where someone would pay $400 to like eat dinner with me. At Sideliner's Grill, that's the best part. That the date happens at Sideliner's Grill. You couldn't even spend $400 at Sideliner's Grill. How many, like, <laughs> could possibly buy? Like, come on. Uh, <laughs> Honky Kong only got $45 for a date, which, which seems makes me like so a sad. good bargain. Seems like a good yeah. bargain, because he comes with his own fruit. <laughs> So you're getting they, fresh bananas? I assume they're fresh. They so they looked fairly fairly fresh, I would say. Fresh ish. Yeah. So you're getting fresh fruit. Uh you're getting I don't know. <laughs> I think I think Honky Kong might wear more clothes than Hernandez does. <laughs> uh, but and he's certainly covered in less paint. But yeah, big ups to Hernandez for being able to earn four hundred dollars. Uh I w- if I was participating in that, I would be Screech. Uh, I would get an embarrassing amount of money bid on me uh, and AC Slater, who in this example is Sean Hernandez, would get lost. So, yes. 
Saved by the Bell references and Pokemon references. Thanks for having me on the show, guys. Uh, we, absolutely. We love it. Um, but yeah, like Sork mentioned, we did have a challenge this yes, we week, did. our annual... Annual? Annual. Sure. Weekly? Weekly. That's the word. Guys, uh, my job is to talk over wrestling shows. That's yes. my job, apparently. Apparently um, he has a thesaurus in front of him. Yes. Uh, so we had our uh, challenge for this week, which, if you don't know, we pick an indie wrestler... And we make a playlist that you can find on youtube.com slash wrestling mayhem show of that wrestler. Um, and you watch it and you let us know what you think, what you like, what you don't like. Uh, and I'm actually lucky that I planned this because all three of the people on this show, I believe, have seen this wrestler and have experienced mm-hmm. this wrestler uh, in various mediums and various uh, states. And that is Ray Rowe, uh, recent uh, Ring of Honor signee uh, Ray Rowe. So, mm-hmm. uh uh, so, I mean, we all obviously have experience of watching Ray Rowe, um, so I don't know if we necessarily need the playlist, but what what, what, what are your uh, favorite things about one Ray Death Row, uh, Sorg or Brandon? Or- uh, uh, he was um, the first, like, you know, first going to indie wrestling kind of suplex machine, I think I experienced. Um, mm-hmm. and, and there's a few others. Dalton Castle, of course, up here is kind of, you know, he's got a very amateur wrestling background, so he applies that in there. Um, but, but he was the first guy that just like, was the, I'm going to come in and kick somebody's ass. Um, it, 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 as I mentioned last week, they, they, you know, some of the big things was them throwing row against, uh, Samoa Joe, uh, you know, when, whenever they bring him in, uh, here with the IWC, um, he's had great matches and great feuds, you know, again, up in Cleveland, of course, we're showing the match of when he visited, when John McChesney actually visited Texas more recently, uh, to renew those feuds a little bit. Um, you know, uh, this guy is so good that when he was in a tag team called Cleveland Mafia, they got over in Pittsburgh wearing Browns <laughs> colors. <laughs> I'll do it. I mean, that kind of says it all right there, right? So, and even with J Rock in tow. <laughs> Go figure. So, awesome. uh, Brandon, what are and, your thoughts on, 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 on Mr. for Brandon? I know you've Bro. seen him both in Cleveland and in Texas, so. Yeah, my thoughts on Ray Row are O H I O. Uh, <laughs> uh, yeah, Row rules. He does. He's an incredible wrestler. He keeps getting better. Mm-hmm. Uh, his match with Hero was off the freaking charts. Mm-hmm. Uh, I don't think I'm gonna see a match on the independent level better than that this year. Uh, I rewatched it again uh, on our YouTube channel. Uh, and it was incredible. It's just absolutely incredible. Uh, it's the best match that I've ever seen in Texas. I can say that, which is which is prestigious because I've seen a lot of good ones. Yeah. Um, he replaced uh, Tozawa on my list of <laughs> great things I've seen. Uh, Ro Tozawa needs to happen, by the way. Uh, but yeah, Ro is an, and he's an incredible dude. He's a sweetheart, and he's fantastic at wrestling, and you know. I'll always be a Ray Rowe fan. He deserves it, every good thing that he gets. I will say, this may take away, but I don't care. Secretly the best smile in wrestling. I love <laughs> Ray Rowe's smile. There's something he's about got that Mark, it. He's got know. that Mark Henry smile going on. Yeah. A little bit, a little like, bit, yeah. So, like, also, it's amazing, like, um, looking back at, like, old photos of Ray Rowe. I mean, like, and not talking about, like, in sort of Sorgs, at, like, 2007, I'd say Sorg, where he was in the Cleveland Mafia and that. But, like, older photos... Like, where he had hair and was, like, in, like, a singlet. Oh, this I haven't it's, seen. Like, it is so weird. It is so weird. Uh, but, like, I, I definitely agree with Brandon's point of how he's sort of gotten better continuously. And he's one of the wrestlers I really slate as one of the ones where I don't ever see him having a bad match with anyone. Like, ever. Like, I, I've seen Ray Rowe probably consistently for, like, two years now. I can't name a match, a bad match that he's had. Um, and that and that says a lot. So um, definitely go support Ray Rowe now that he is a contracted member of Ring of Honor. Um, now that he uh, is getting some uh, getting some more exposure, getting around, um, go support him because he's one of I would say the top. He, he's one of the up and coming uh, best you could find in indie wrestling. So go support him. Uh, next week's challenge. Uh, that you can uh, find on our YouTube uh, channel, youtube.com slash wrestling mayhem show, uh, is someone that Sorg mentioned. Uh, who I, This is actually cool because a lot of times it's an indie name that I know, and I throw it out, and I'm like, Sorg, what do you think of this? Uh, and But this is someone from Sorg's territory that I've never gotten to personally see live before. I've seen clips, but 
Um, I'll actually get to watch a bit thoroughly. And that is Dalton Castle, the current uh, IWC champion. Um, so, yeah, uh, that's going to be next week's challenge where you can go to YouTube.com slash Wrestling Mayhem Show. Uh, look at the playlist. Um, you're not limited to the playlist. Mm-hmm, um, mm-hmm. So if you see anything of Dalton Castle's, watch it. I, I um, recommend, uh, sorry, and I don't know what you're going to put in the playlist here, but I recommend uh, looking up the IWC Aftershock episodes. There's a lot of, I want to say most of them feature something with them um, mm-hmm. because uh, not, Dalton's pretty serious in the ring. Um, but he's also a really good comedy. He's got a great promo. He's, with, yeah, yeah, he's a good comedy character too. Um, and there's a lot of uh, fun segments they do with him and the host of that show, Justin Plummer. Um, they had a pillow fight match at one point, I think. And uh, <laughs> uh, maybe you'll uh, enjoy Brandon the positioning of the ring announcer that they used during that match. Uh, so uh, it, it's it's pretty good with uh, one Pedro DeLuca who uh, frequents up here. Uh, so uh, that's yeah. I'll make sure to check it out. Uh, Dalton Castle is also my favorite uh, PC game from the 1980s. <laughs> oh, wow! Huh! Yeah. Did you that, just was get, a, yeah. that was a game! Wow! I, I Is this like an... I wanna, now I want to uh, inquire if that's like an underlying like reference. Well, I don't know, because really he... Know. Um, he also He's also a radio DJ, I believe, in Albany, and he DJs under that name, too, so I don't... Could be... Uh, I don't know yeah. if it's a it's it's a stage name I, or not. I am sort of disappointed in myself about not investigating wrestler names more often. Uh, I still am under the assumption that Page Turner is named Page Turner because that's also the name of the librarian on the cartoon Arthur. <laughs> so I'm gonna hope that Page Turner is just a huge Arthur Mark, and that's why that that's her wrestling name. Oh, sorry, uh, I also I really want to pair her up with a wrestler named D.W. <laughs> well, I'll, I'll be searching. I'll be searching the webs for some of the initials DW. Also, to attest to this point, it was like a month ago. I finally like set in what like the colonies' names meant. Um, so oh, yeah, Jesus. yeah. I was <laughs> like, oh, he's that... green ant because he's a rookie. I get it. Worker ant. Yeah. There we go. Um, but yeah, that's the challenge for this week. You can go to youtube.com slash wrestling mayhem show. Either watch the playlist, watch something else, or even go a bit further, buy a DVD. Um, maybe a DVD that you can find at sorgatronmedia.com um, that features Dalton Castle. Um, and go tweet us at Mayhem Show or send us an email at goodtimes at wrestlingmayhemshow.com letting us know what you thought of this week's challenge, Dalton Castle, and we will read them on the show. Um, so go, uh, go do that. Uh, there's also a couple indies that I do want to promote uh, that are coming up this weekend. The first is that Sorg IWC is back this weekend. From what I know. Oh God! Oh God! <laughs> no more. <laughs> uh, yeah, I have to take a trip to Clearfield, which is like two hours away. Uh, so that'll be fun. Uh, no, no, I enjoy Clearfield again. Uh, really, really good crowd. Really, uh, they actually had did a really good show last time they were up there in November, October, something like that. Uh, I, uh, I think they tend to do something with charities. Uh, when we're up there last time it was the boys and girls club um and it was a really fun show and they did a lot of uh interesting uh stuff in the ring kind of in conjunction with that that uh concept uh mm-hmm. so uh they just exactly. announced the matches like yesterday so i don't think i caught yeah, I, any of them so it, it does look like a really good card though uh mm-hmm. dalton Katz will be defending the iwc title against bobby fish uh, and Anthony Nice uh, of Dragon Gate USA will be taking on Facade, where the winner will apparently face AJ Styles on April 12th. Yes, uh, and Nice, who somehow somebody got into my equipment and had him. Oh, what's going on? <laughs> AJ Styles. I'm just re- I'm just representing AJ Styles. Represent um, uh, Anthony Nice, who somehow got in my equipment and interrupted on the big screen uh, this weekend the facade and RJ City uh, match. So is that awesome? Yes. Uh, no, that'll be fun. And, and the Clearfoot shows, like I said, uh, ones like these or the West Virginia shows they do uh, are always a lot of fun because they really do more interesting stuff. I feel sometimes because it is you know the kind of crowd it is, and it's not like something that's a big show like Super Indie or something. So. Um, mm. Yeah, they, they, they do have a, a lot of fun there. So, Awesome. And the other show that I want to promote uh, is actually two shows uh, that I definitely want to touch on. We had Gary J of uh, 
a couple, uh, I would say a few weeks ago, uh, to talk about this, but I want to promote it again since it is this weekend. That is St. Louis Anarchy. They have their double shot event for Gateway to Anarchy uh, this weekend on Friday and then Saturday uh, with a lot of great talent on there. Uh, some There were some injuries and some changes. Uh, Matt Jackson of the Young Bucks was actually injured. However, Nick Jackson will still be there. And now for uh, night one, it's uh, Nick Jackson and Johnny Gargano against Davey Vega and Matt Fitchett. So that alone is something I think you need to see. Uh, there's a lot of people that, uh, we, like I mentioned, we've had Gary J on the show. He's having uh, two matches that night. Uh, including on, the, on night two, he'll be in a two out of three falls match defending his St. Louis Anarchy title against Kyle O'Reilly. Um, there's going to be a lot of good stuff on that card, uh, and this is one of their biggest events they've ever put on. Um, and I love St. Louis Anarchy. They're really doing, I think, some of the best stuff in the Midwest right now. Um, so you can go support them. I believe the website is slawrestling.com. Uh, go support them if you are in the Alton, Illinois area. Uh, Friday or Saturday uh, for Gateway to Anarchy. Um, so go support them because they're good guys over there and they, they, they do some really amazing stuff uh, mm -hmm. uh, over in uh, St. Louis. I know that so, I've said some stupid shit on this show already, but can I, can I just say something because I don't have a lot of opportunities to say it? Yeah, uh, I'm really pissed off that Kyle O'Reilly's entrance theme is not performed by Rilo Kiley. That's always bothered me. Every single time, I'm just like, oh, a Jenny Lewis-themed wrestler. But nope. Uh, that's this a joke. Is, this is, this is why, this no is why you're the world idea, world man, enjoy. Brandon. I love so, it. Shout out to that. But yeah, the St. Louis Anarchy guys bust their asses all the time. And they never get the credit they deserve, I think. Like, those guys, this, this double shot has suffered so many setbacks and weird just signing aways and injuries and happenstance. Mm -hmm. Like, if you're anywhere near that area, go to these shows. Like... These guys are amazing, and they are bringing something to that area that that area does not have. And you should go, and you should watch this. You should pay money. And you should consider, even if you can't get out to it, buying a ticket on the internet and just giving them $10. Uh, <laughs> because Pierre Abernathy, secretly a wrestling genius. Uh, Evangelistico, pretty obviously a wrestling genius. Uh, the squad rules, and there's going to be so many awesome guys on that show. Just, just go, just go to it. Go and I know show. they also announced a couple uh, big names for their May event, including Chris Hero and uh, Alex Shelley making his return from uh, Japan. So, uh, so go support them because they're bringing in like crazy talent. Um, that's that's you know they're it's, like you said, Pierre Abernathy uh, goes all out for these shows. So go support him. Um, but yeah, that is all I have, Sorg. I guess, uh, and that's our show, pretty much. Uh, thank you to Brandon Stroud, uh, which you can find on Twitter, at Mr. Brandon Stroud, for appearing uh, on this show. We would love to have you uh, sometime again. Yeah, brother, anytime you need me, I'm here. You work with me now, so. <laughs> yeah, but thank absolutely. you, uh, Thank you, Damon. Thank you, Sorg. Thank you, Wheels. Thank you, everybody, for letting me be on the show with you. I really appreciate it. Right, awesome. Uh, so, yeah, you can find us every Tuesday night around 11 p.m. Eastern Time, 10 p.m. Uh, Central Time. Or not Central Time. Yeah, it's Central Time. I don't yes. even know my What time around. zone are you in? I don't even know. Um, but, yeah, uh, at live.sargatronmedia.com where we do this. And then uh, a couple hours before then we do the Wrestling Mayhem Show where we talk about mainstream wrestling because that's what you want us to talk about, really. You want us – to know why we hate TNA constantly. So I want to talk about Batista a lot. Can we just do another hour where I just talk about Batista at length? Yeah, but just just come on to you know what? Come on to every show that we produce. You can come on Insert Coin to Begin and talk about you know amazing video game jokes and and awesome cast. Yeah, and I, I I've decreed this Sorg Sorg now must you must do this now. Oh. All right, <laughs> boss. <laughs> <laughs> Fuck yes. <laughs> <laughs> when did this turn into Amontron? <laughs> it's awesome. But yeah, uh, that's our Indie Mayhem Show. Oh, that's you're doing week. the tags. You can find us at WrestlingMayhemShow.com. Oh, yeah. We're on iTunes, Stitcher, and YouTube. You started them, but you never finished them. I know. <laughs> you're I'm doing sorry. all this stuff, and I'm like, oh, cool. He's taking my job. I guess he is taking it over, and he's booking guests for other <laughs> shows. Why the fuck not, right? You can also <laughs> uh, send an email and uh, and and complain to Amon uh, at uh, <laughs> subject line Amon sucks 
at goodtimes at wrestlingmayhemshow.com, 412206WMS0. Um, and, uh, oh, yeah, you already did the live thing, you know. Uh, Live.sorgatronmedia.com uh, on Tuesday nights, 11 p.m. Uh, Facebook, Google+, YouTube, Roku, Stitcher. Some of those are social networks. I kind of mix those all together. But you can find us in all those kinds of places, audio, video, formats, talk with us. Wrestling Mayhem Show uh, group on Facebook is the uh, really the hoppinest place you can uh, discuss things with us. So please join us there. There's a ton of people move, moving in there lately. Um, and with that, hey, uh, go watch some indie wrestling. We'll see you next week. Never said I was a gangster or thug, but I'm an animal. Eat for the oh. taste of the poor. Yeah. Sick, sick, sick. You know how I act now. When you got a problem, come and see if I'm a back down. Act wild. Steady sipping check now. Do you want to know how weird my life is? I just how discovered weird. that I have a shrink-wrapped copy of WWF Originals, WWE Originals, I guess, uh, which features the Rikishi hit Put a Little Ass on it, <laughs> which, oh, which I quote and sing all the time, but I had no idea that I actually had a physical copy of it, much less a physical copy of it that's never been opened. So this baby's going on eBay. <laughs> Hell yeah. Somebody will buy it.